Hi there, my name's Aaron Short and welcome to my YouTube channel and today I'm checking out the new version of Logic, Logic 11. This was announced last week at the iPad event and it's very exciting. We've got some AI features here coming to Logic and I'm going to show you some of my favorite ones. There's some features here that I think will be great for singers and guitarists that want to rework their own original compositions or work on brand new compositions. So let's check it out together. So as you can see, Logic version 11, and I'm just gonna create an audio project. What I wanna do first of all is set the tempo to adapt. This will figure out the tempo of a song that I import. I'm gonna import one of my own songs. So import audio file, and I'm gonna choose my song in between. Okay, now change sample rate. Now I'll convert the file because I'm at 48K here. That's fine. So it does that. Now it's analyzing the track and I want to show the damn beat and tempo grid. So what you can do at this point is you can, I'll just lower this so it's not too loud. You can turn on the click and see if it's detected the tempo correctly. Okay, so that's pretty good. So what you can do here is, first of all, you can click on this and can control click and click on stem splitter. So this is new, we've had this with AI before. This will split your song into the individual parts. You can choose to get the vocals, the drums, the bass, and the other stuff. So click on split. I've used this before with apps and things and it's worked okay. It's never going to get it perfect, and you're always going to have the reverb and effects on from the master recording, but at least you can get an idea of the tracks. So this could be really useful if you want to make backing tracks as well. Check this out. This is just the drums by itself from that original file you just heard. Turn the click off. So it's kind of lo-fi, but it's pretty good, right? You don't hear other stuff. And I'll fast forward to the later sounds. So it's pretty good. That's the drums by itself. Let's hear the bass by itself. So I can hear some stuff in the background, but it's really, it's really well done. Here's the other stuff. So in this case, it's the guitars. And then you've got the vocal as well. It's the isolated vocal. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. And it's so hard. So not perfect, but some of the best isolated tracks I've ever heard. And this will just get better and better with time, of course, as technology improves. This is great because you can use this to start to remix a song. You've basically got the stems here to use to remix. But to take it one step further, something else you can now do is you can replace the drums and the bass and also add keys as well. There's virtual session players here. Let's click on here, make a new track. So track, new session player track and i'm going to choose drummer so we're going to have a session drummer come in now and uh, this does make my computer slow down i'm running the m1 max macbook pro when we get the new m4 macbook pros this thing's going to be great uh, it's really going to crush it but if i drag that to the start here and what i'll do is i'll just play that by itself so you can hear it uh, by itself Okay, so now if I add in the bass from the original st song, the stem we just created, we get this. And the original drums sounded like this, just to remind you. So it's a different part. Now you can change the part because 
in these drums here, you can come in here and take out the snare. And you can change the drummer, you can do a random drum, you can change the amount of playing it does, you can change the amount of fills, the fill complexity, you can change all that stuff. And you can even convert this to MIDI to really fine tune it. So for example here, I want to try to recreate that original drum part. So I'll do something like this, more beats, so on four. So check this out now, this is my new drum part. And this is the original drum part. So I can basically redo stuff or I can recreate a backing track very easily because I can then add another drum section and make that the verse, another one make it the chorus and basically rebuild the tracks with the virtual instruments and then have full control over it. I can do the same with the bass as well. I can also add a keyboard. Now for this, you obviously need to have the chords. It's a shame that this can't detect the chords. There's some very good apps out there that can detect the chords of music. I really hope they build that in eventually. But let's check it out. Let's do a track, a new session player track. This time we'll do the bass player. Okay, create. Again, it takes a bit of a while. You get the beach ball on my computer. It's not the most powerful Mac but I can't wait for the M4 Max to come out. But it's not bad, it's still, you know, when you think what it's doing, it's still pretty good. So here's the bass line. Let's take a quick listen to that. And I'll put that with my new drums, not the original one. Sounds really good, but we've got the wrong chords. So what we have now is we have a chord track. So that's just a generic chord track that it loaded in. You can just type in random chords, of course, if you want to. But make sure you press G to get the global track and then go to where the chords are. Make sure you enable the chord track here. And then what you can do is you can come here and you can change the chord. So this is where you would import, input, sorry, the chords that you're using. So I'll do add. Now this was a C they gave me. I know my song because I wrote it, right? So it's G. The first chord is G. And then the next chord will be D. And I can do with an F sharp in the bass. So bass note, F sharp. Very cool. Or major, F sharp in the bass. Then I can do the next chord. They've got A minor, so I know it's E minor. The next one I know is C. And then that repeats. So G. This time I could just do D for a variation, E minor, and C again. I can also repeat that very easily like this, as I can with the other sections that I made earlier. So this is now the chords. So now if we play the song, now it's playing the chords that I put in. And it sounds really good, but again, I can change that. So I can say to it, look, I want the bass to be a bit more specific. Like with my original version of the song, if you listen to that again, I asked the bass player to play this riff in the bass. It's like an extra hook. Bum, bum. I wanted to go up with the thirds like that. Bum, 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 right? So you can do that here as well. If you want to, you can tell it, look, I want to have the root only, or I want some notes. It'll sound like this. So now it's moving a bit more like my original version did. So let's check out that. And you can do way more as well. You can say, you can change the phrasing, intensity, complexity, change the bass sound have more fills, less fills. You can really play around with that. And like before, you can also go in, convert to MIDI and make your own specific bass line as well. But this was a very quick idea that the computer gave me. It sounds like this. I really like it. I really like it. If I add the other stuff back in again, which is the guitars, we can hear what it would sound like in context.
I, I really like that. So let's put the original um, back in instead, which sounded like this. And the new version I just made sounds like this. I really like it. I mean, it, it sounds it sounds great. I mean, I love the original version. That's my friends playing on that. We took a lot of time on it. But this is going to be so powerful because you can very easily remix songs, recreate songs. If you want to make backing tracks, you can now split the stems up and make drums and bass. If you play electric guitar, you can take the drums and bass out of songs and use them for backing tracks for a live gig. You can do that and then do what I did here and recreate the tracks with your own session players, which means you're then no longer using someone else's performance. You can get into copyright issues with that. But if you do what I did, you can bring the files in as a guide and then and get the tempo and everything. And then you can bring in your own keys, bass and drums and remake the track by typing in the chords and changing the arrangement. In a few hours, you can recreate these tracks and then go out and play electric guitar over the top and have your own backing tracks that you've made yourself. I know a lot of musicians will want to do that, that play solo and want some backing tracks. Also, if you're writing songs, just import a bunch of chords, change some things around, and you can start to build songs. I used to use a program called Band in the Box, which does more than this. It lets you actually bring in guitar loops and things like that. I really hope that they take this even further and support virtual guitars and vocals. So we can basically build songs from scratch with virtual session musicians. But this is way better than I thought it was going to be. I'm really excited. There's other stuff in this update as well. If you've got Logic, you should check it out. If you haven't got Logic, you should check it out as well. This is great for musicians. It's just getting better and better. And it's so great to see Apple and Logic taking on that power of the M4 chip. Well, this isn't even running an M4 chip. This is working fine on my M1 chip. So just imagine what the future could hold. It boggles the mind. And I can't wait to see. Thanks for watching the video. If you've tried this, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. And if you're new here, please subscribe and ring the bell. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Somewhere in between.